This is a reading from the book Muscle and a Shovel by Michael Shank. <clears throat> We're on chapter 12. It starts on page 89. And the title of the chapter is The Holy Ghost and the Porch Swing. And the subtitle is Christmas at Home. We rolled into my mom and dad's driveway with a huge box tied to the top of our car. It was Thursday, December 24th. The big box on the top was Dad's Christmas gift wrapped in the box, wrapped in a box the size of a dishwasher, and it had made the trip from Nashville successfully. Inside the box was a simple family tradition that had started many years before. When I was about six, I had asked Mom what I could get Dad for Christmas, and she recommended a replacement bottle of Old Spice aftershave. Old Spice was the only aftershave that Dad would ever wear. Since that time, a bottle had always been included as one of his many gifts, so the practice evolved into a family tradition. Dad loved it. So the big box we had brought from Nashville contained one small bottle of Old Spice wrapped in progressively larger boxes. To top it off, I had put 12 bricks in the bottom of the box just to throw him off the scent. No pun intended. My parents' small house was filled with relatives from all over the country. Mom and Dad, now faithful Baptists themselves, entertained the family who, like so many families, was an unusual blend of people. Everyone talked, laughed, fussed, discussed, argued, gossiped, napped, and ate some more. The kids screamed, the TVs blared. Religion nagged at me. During Mom's, Mom's years of sickness, she and Dad started attending the Baptist church with me. Grandma started attending with us, and then two of my aunts as well. My Baptist faith that had begun with Eula had spread throughout much of our family. However, my distant relatives were much more diverse. I had a Catholic aunt and uncle, a Pentecostal aunt, two Methodist cousins, a Presbyterian uncle, another cousin who had married a Mormon guy. She was his only wife so far an aunt who was a foot-washing Baptist, an agnostic cousin, and several believers with no official religious affiliations. My Pentecostal aunt was by far the most knowledgeable of the Bible among all of my family members. Aunt Nancy, I said to her as we sat on the couch visiting while my young cousins wrestled on the floor, where is the sinner's prayer found in the Bible? Well, Michael, honey, I don't exactly know. She replied, offering no help. Why do you ask? Just a research project, I responded. Aunt Nancy considered my response for a moment. Michael, have you received the Holy Ghost? Uh, I'm not sure, I stammered. Oh, honey, you've got to receive the Holy Ghost, she said with concern, as though she had just learned that I was terminally ill. At that point, she took my hand, stood up, from the couch and said, come with me. Aunt Nancy led me out to my parents' front porch where there were no family members or screaming kids. Michael, I'm gonna pray for you and I'm going to ask the Lord for his spirit to move over you and give you the gift of speaking in tongues. Aunt Nancy, please don't. But she took me by the arm and pulled me down onto the porch swing, plopping down beside me at the same time. I lost my place. Hold on. At the same moment, she then closed her eyes, raised up both arms and began to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, sweet Jesus, I come to you, Jesus, for brother Michael, that you would reach down your loving hands and touch him with your great power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, sweet Jesus, bless him with a baptism of your Holy Ghost and give him the gift to speak in tongues. I bowed my head slightly, but did not dare close my eyes. Her emotionalism, animation, and the sheer volume of her voice was all so distracting that I could not do anything but watch the show. Then Aunt Nancy did something very bizarre. She began to speak in tongues. With her eyes still closed and her arms raised upward, her head began to bob from side to side. And she said what sounded like, Otro macho cashun dala tone Dalale me ke ero sutro po sala ostro. 
As Nancy continued to pray, the foreign sounds came with speed and proficiency. She rolled her R's like a, Sp a Spaniard, and I would have thought, if she had not been sitting right beside me, that she had been replaced by a totally different person. I had no idea what she was saying or what any of it meant. At one point, Mom opened the front door to see what was going on on the front porch, but when she saw Aunt Nancy doing her thing, Mom quickly shut the door, retreating back into the safety of her Baptist home. Evidently, Mom wanted no part of the tongues experience. She did not know what she was missing. Aunt Nancy finished opening her eyes, hugged and kissed me, and asked if I felt anything. Actually, I had not felt anything other than curiosity. However, I loved her and truly appreciated her concern as well as her heartfelt efforts. Even though I did not agree with her approach, nor did I understand her practices, I believed that she had a sincere and loving heart. As for me, could I speak in tongues? Nope. Oh, well, back to the house. I spent the rest of the evening discussing religion. <clears throat> I spent the rest of the evening discussing religion and polling my relatives about their religious beliefs. Where was the sinner's prayer in the Bible? Why did they believe what they believed? How did they get into their faith? Why do they stay with their particular faith? What did they get out of their particular flavor of faith? Is everyone going to heaven? Why are there so many churches? Why do denominations teach opposing doctrines if everyone is going to the same place? How can everyone be religiously correct? How was each one saved in their respective faiths? It was a fascinating experience. It was also a failure. No one knew where to find the sinner's prayer in the Bible. We drove back to Janetta's parents' home after eating and visiting with my mom and dad. Her parents' home was a quiet place. They used feather bed mattresses and heated the house with a coal-burning stove in the basement. There was nothing like it. If you ever wanted a good night's sleep, you could get it in that house. Even in the middle of winter, when southern Illinois temperatures dipped into the single digits, Janetta's mother would crack the window in the bedroom so fresh air could ventilate the house throughout the night. We would get into that feather bed, cover ourselves with three handmade quilts, and breathe the fresh country air all night long. Staying there was a small slice of paradise. The following morning, we, wrote, we woke to the rooster's crow. The smell of biscuits, gravy, bacon, and eggs filled the house, but that feather bed had felt so good. Enjoy it while you can, I thought to myself as I lay there under the warm covers, because the big city is calling. Today was Friday, December 25th, Christmas Day. I knew that today would be the day I would find that elusive sinner's prayer. Surely it was in the Bible somewhere. I just had to find it. 